Yo, what's up guys? I'm doing today, man. Coming out with some more NBA breaking news. Now today I broke down the Terry Rozier trade as a Heat fan. Now today, once again, we have breaking news out of the NBA. As according to Woj, I was literally just chilling, chopping over my mom, and I checked my watch, and I see this news right here. Like, dog, what? Breaking, the Milwaukee Bucks have dismissed head coach Adrian Griffin, which if you don't watch the Bucks particularly close, you would be like, what? All right, so literally as I'm about to go ahead and edit this video, I see the Super NBA Central from Chris Mannix about how Giannis reportedly lost faith in Adrian Griffin now. In Milwaukee, whatever Giannis says goes. He's a franchise player. He's one of the best players in the NBA, and he, he lost faith in Adrian Griffin. With all due respect, you got to give him, you gotta get him out of there, man. With all due respect, you got to get him out of there, man. It's as simple as that. The Bucks have the third best record in the NBA, and they are currently the second seed in the Eastern Conference, right behind the Boston Celtics, sitting with a record of 30 and 13. I can't remember a time where a team was 30 and 13 and fired their head coach, but it's not only that. The Bucks, yes, they might be 30 and 13. They have Giannis and Dame, one of the best duels in recent memory, one of the best duels in the NBA. And they're also six and four in the last 10 games as well. 19 and four at home, 11 and nine on the road. And they're only three and a half games behind, in my opinion, in the consensus opinion, I feel like everybody in the world, um, three and a half games behind the Boston Celtics. Now, after looking at this tweet, I just saw a tweet uh, from Wolves that not only will the new interim uh, head coach be assistant uh, Joe Prunty, but also the fact that according to Woj that I just saw him tweet this out, the Milwaukee Bucks after 43 games are moving on from Adrian Griffin while they're 30 and 13. And according to Woj, they're planning on potentially looking at Doc Rivers. Yes, that Doc Rivers that went ahead and is now commentating NBA games, the Doc Rivers that chokes in the playoffs, the Doc Rivers that gets carried by his 2008 ring with the Boston Celtics, the Doc Rivers was with the 76ers and just got fired last season for once again underachieving and not getting into the Eastern Conference playoff game, that Doc Rivers. Now, obviously you want a different defensive regime for the um, Milwaukee Bucks. They have good defenders. Obviously their guards aren't good defenders. Damian Lillard is not a good defender. Malik Beasley is not a good defender. Chris Middleton at points can be solid. Giannis is a DPY, DPOY level talent. And Brook Lopez is a DPOY talent as well. He finished second in defensive player of the year voting last season. Now, I remember early on in the season, there was a little bit of a dust up between Terry Stotts, longtime head coach of the Blazers with Damian Lillard. You were like, oh shit, that's cool. Terry Stotts, assistant head coach for his now um, the Milwaukee Bucks uh, superstar, Damian Lillard. Okay, they have some familiarity there. That's pretty cool. Uh, there was a little bit of a dust up, honestly, between Adrian Griffin and not a dust up, but a kind of like argument, maybe altercation uh, between him and Terry Stotts and him and Adrian Griffin. Uh, so apparently they had a um, kind of a verbal altercation. I believe uh, Sham has uh, tweeted about and reported in his article uh, with the Athletic. And uh, apparently he had a verbal altercation with Adrian Griffin at shoot around uh, two days prior. And they ended up resigning, um, which was pretty surprising. Um, it was a little incident to shoot around, maybe some uh, back and forth being like, Terry Stotts, obviously a long time head coach. He's been doing this. And then Adrian Griffin, long time, I believe, assistant with the Raptors, kind of like a defensive regime. You thought they were bringing in the defensive mind head coach for the uh, Milwaukee Bucks after just moving on from a beautiful host after my Miami Heat, thankfully. I went ahead and beat them the first round of the NBA playoffs. A one against eight, technically one against seven. Miami Heat were the seventh seed but they lost the play-in game to the Hawks to make them the eighth seed, but they were the seventh seed all season. They were the seventh seed in the play-in. They were like, at least like three and a half, maybe even four games ahead of the Atlanta Hawks for the seventh seed. Uh, but that's besides the point. Adrian Griffin is gone. Uh, I just want to go ahead and just reiterate once again, the Milwaukee Bucks are setting a record of 30 and 13, three and a half games behind the Boston Celtics. Um, I mean, yeah, three and a half games by the Boston Celtics. They are actually tied for the second best record in the NBA after Carl Anthony Towns and the 70 and the Timberwolves on the troll last night. He dropped, 60, he dropped 62 fucking points and he went ahead and they just kept trying to force feed him the ball and he was missing layups and he gave him a bench to like a minute left to go because they're trying to get him to 100 points and him losing the game. And then you got him be dropping 70 like last night. Uh, uh, 76ers, um, that's a game high for them. Um, that's Joel Embiid's obviously career high, and that's all on the day of um, Kobe scoring 81 against the Raptors and just baptizing Jalen Rose. Like, so much is going on. So much is going on right now with the NBA. 
Cat 60 in a loss, uh, and Bead 70 point masterclass to really lock down the MVP for the foreseeable future. Going against Victor Miyamo. Webby did his thing 33 points in like 28 minutes. He was doing his thing, but hey. Adrian Griffin is out. I just want to go ahead and reiterate and just read to you like how bad defensively the Milwaukee Bucks are. The Milwaukee Bucks offensively are not a bad team. Um, Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo, they're really good players. Malik Beasley is shooting the cover off the wall. Middleton has been pretty solid. He's been inconsistent at that point. He's like 24, but he dropped 12. Brooke Lopez, he can obviously still space the floor and block shots and do his thing as usual. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks have the... Hold on, give me one moment, actually. The Milwaukee Bucks... The Milwaukee Bucks have the second best offense in the NBA. Yeah, no, no, no. The Milwaukee Bucks right now, according to, according to um, points per game, they are tied for the best offense in the NBA with the Pacers. The Pacers obviously have had a couple of games without Tyrese Halliburton and they just traded first to Yachtman, this and that in the third. Well, the stats are the stats. Uh, 124.6 points per game the Milwaukee Bucks are scoring per game, which is tied for first with the Indiana Pacers, which is absolutely insane. So their, their offense is absolutely elite, uh, which makes sense. They have guys of the best like Bobby Portis and Pat Connaughton. Like, they have guys. They have guys. Um, then you have the defense, which the defense is just Swiss cheese. The Milwaukee Bucks have the one, two, three, four, five, sixth worst defense in the NBA. They're giving up an average of 120 and a half points per game. The Milwaukee Bucks... As a sports better, the amount of money I have made fading the Milwaukee Bucks in terms of player props by picking like especially really good guards against them. Like they've made me a shit ton of money, bro. Shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks and Luta Adrian Griffin. You would think the defensive regime would get better now without him. But again, I'm not too familiar with their uh assistant head coach. I don't know if he's defensive minded, offensive minded. I don't know what he is, if he's balanced, this down the third. I have no familiarity with him whatsoever, but shout out to him. For becoming a new head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks, like I said, are still one of the best teams in the NBA. They're still one of the best contending teams in the NBA. The defense is not it at all, especially when you have Giannis and Brook, two DPOY level talents, and your defense is still bad. Like this is it's it's it, it's it's tat, it's bad. You played back to back games against the worst team in the league, the Detroit Pistons, who had lost like 30 games in a row. Back to back games. 120 here, 130 here, giving up, by the way, and scoring, by the way. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, um, according to NBA stats, they're allowing the fourth most points to point guards this season. The fourth most points. Obviously, with a backward of Damon Beasley, you would expect that. They're allowing the most points as well to shooting guards this season. Uh, when you look at small fours, where are the Milwaukee Bucks? The Milwaukee Bucks are actually not in the... Uh... Wait, hold on. Might be looking at something wrong. Hold on. <gasps> Milwaukee Bucks. They're actually not in the top 10 here. So the Milwaukee Bucks in terms of uh, point guards, I mean, in terms of small fours, they're allowing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. So I actually not terrible against small forwards. I mean, hey, like I said, Milton's a solid defender. If he matches up against three, that's not that bad. So they're allowing what I said, the 16th most points to uh, small forwards, the first to shooting guards, and the fourth to uh, point guards. Yep. Now, in terms of power forwards, you would think uh, with Giannis, I mean, you would think they would have one of the best defenses against power forwards. Uh, they're allowing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13th most points about four which is pretty solid right around bang on average right slightly above uh league average right there in terms of centers you would think oh they have they have uh brooke lopez man uh one of the best shot blockers in the nba uh one of the best uh paint presences in the nba as well um uh, the milwaukee bucks they're not allowing like top 10 most points about to power forward and centers but they're allowing with the centers in particular the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteenth fourteenth most points so they're top 15 or 16th in every single position in terms of allowing the most points to and this is a team with championship aspirations a team that will get absolutely clowned on if they don't make it to at least the minimum eastern conference finals because they went ahead and acquired damian lillard they traded away drew holiday you have to win when you make a deal for damian lillard the guy's one of the best players of all time top 75 greatest player of all time 
he has all the accolades really except for that illustrious nba championship that is why he agreed to request the trade from the bucks he wanted to go about miami heat but joe cronin wants to be a he wants to be one of those we didn't get him getting him going to the bucks teamed up a young superstar player one of the best players in basketball and they still have one of the worst teams in the nba but still they're so good offensive that they still are one of the best teams in the nba and are tied for the second best record in the nba even with with what did i say the sixth or the fifth worst defense in the nba whoever this new head coach is man you have a lot to go ahead and figure out you gotta get a defensive minded head coach now doc rivers i don't know if he's that guy man i'm just i'm just gonna call a spade a spade bucks fans who is the guy for the milwaukee bucks next head coaching uh, job i've really forgot who else is out there except for doc rivers i just uh will just tweeted it out um but the Milwaukee Bucks are still one of the best teams in the NBA with one of the worst defenses in the NBA. Them firing Adrian Griffin, in my opinion, is very shocking just because of how good they've been. Yes, I know I've just mentioned how bad they are defensively, but still, it's not like they're the worst team in the NBA, if that makes any logical sense. I don't know, but it's really shocking. Wasn't this, isn't this kind of same thing I have with David Blatt? With David Blatt, I heard from the Cavs where they had a pretty good record and they fired him this is just super super weird and again if you're not tapped in with the bucks you're like damn the 30 and 13 i'm a casual I'm not really watching their games um damn they really fired him what the fuck did he do something gotta happen it's the defense bro it's the maybe the altercation with terry has maybe behind the scenes and stuff going on as well that's tough adrian griffin that man literally didn't even last he, he blasted barely half the season half the season of 41 games he allowed to 43 games that man didn't even last to the all-star game imagine if this man literally was the head coach of the nba eastern conference he could have ah, joe mazula the got the best team in the league he probably would have been at least top three or four or five i mean i don't know i don't know a, a, adrian griffin obviously just wasn't working defensively with, with the uh bucks I'm not going to give him all the credit in the world for the offense because when you have Dame and Giannis and you have really good role players like Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis and Pat Connors and like, I'm not going to give him all the credit for the offense. But for the defense, absolutely fucking putrid. Andrew Griffin is out as the Bucks head coach. Am I shocked? Absolutely. But it's not like there's not reasons for his firing. So I'm not going to be like, what the? fuck actually i will be like what the fuck because he's 43 games into the season but they would at least give him a year to go into the playoffs and see how that works now mid-season with one of the best teams in the nba you have a head coaching spot you have to absolutely hit on this because coaches mean so much especially for a team that is this fucking awful defensively you better absolutely nail this next head coach because if you don't if you don't things get get very 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 bad in Milwaukee, in the city of Milwaukee, in of the in, in the state of Wisconsin, and the Packers just lost because Andres Carlson missed a forty something yard, forty one yard field goal, and then the next day after that, um, Tyler Bass missed a forty four yard field goal. I don't know where the fuck I'm going, but NFL playoffs this year, and the Adrian Griffin is not, and he's fucking out of here. Uh, but yeah, but other than that, yo, that is the video. So go down below, drop a like, comment down below, sub up, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok, your boy John. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm out, man. Peace.